Okay, so we're going to continue the modular series here. Now, if you're new to the channel or haven't seen any of these videos before, check out the playlist on the channel. Start with working on a grid if you want to start creating some modular kits. I go over a lot of stuff in the other videos, but I still get quite a lot of questions, and that's what this one's about. We're actually going to go through and talk about a couple things that I get asked quite a bit. So um, first up is going to be the difference between the walls the way I do it and the way walls other people might do it. So uh, one of the main things here to remember is that I'm not really doing it any different for the most part. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and just kind of play with this idea real quick. Run this out, something like that. This ain't going to be perfect here. I'm not worried about accuracy and staying on the grid too much right now. But, um, so you're probably used to seeing wall units, something like this. They're manifold mesh. They're completely solid. They might have the same kind of origin points in the corners, but they're centered aligned and all that fun stuff like that and then meanwhile my walls are broken down to these planes uh, the reason why this occurs okay is because uh, first of all I'm only doing half of a wall I'm not doing the whole wall so this whole other section over here doesn't matter right and then now this section right this is not going to be viewed to the, the, the player so it's useless um, there's times you might want to leave it it just depends on how you're setting up your kit, when you plan on using these walls, or how you plan on using these walls. But generally speaking, I don't usually have an issue with this to just call them out. Yeah. And so that ends up with that plane with the origin point offset. That's all it comes down to right there. It's really not that complicated. So when you start cutting in doors, it, it kind of seems more complicated. It's really not. Usually you just want the door to line up on a grid or the door frame, right? That's usually pretty important you might want to create things like sockets in unreal engine where you can by code place plugs or door frames into all your door holes basically might be something you want to try to do um, now with all that out of the way another benefit of this of course is that simple fact that i'm saying you can uh, we're working half of a wall here so if you have half of a wall you can have an exterior side right and then if you go on the inside, you can have an interior side with a different material using the same wall unit, basically. So you can do that with the door frame as well, or window frames, whatever the case. Um, so if you didn't do that, you can see like this pillar here. If, if I cut it down the middle, we could split it in half, of course. Um, but if I don't do that, I might end up with just one material on this. And this on the inside here would probably have wallpaper on it. So that's going to end up being uh, part of the interior. So compared to the exterior, so splitting the pillar even might be quite useful. There's other times you might not want to split them. And so doing a solid piece out here like that would make more sense, right? It's just really going to depend on how many different pieces you need and how you plan on utilizing them. This is very granular in nature where you can you know, change your, your boards out, your floorboards or uh, whatever, right? Door frames, change the windows. Um, if you want to make the walls thicker at any point, you can always do that as well. Set like a minimum... Um, like a minimum thickness amount that you know you're going to use or want to use and then you can work out from there and uh, if you make something thicker you just make a little transition piece like this like this would be the transition piece uh, so I can make wall units that come out more um, or you can just pull out the walls and then put something in front of it to block it so there's no right and wrong answers here technically if you want to just block it with a pillar or something you can do that all right and then the floors of course um, if you don't need the sides, you don't need the sides, obviously. But uh, if you do, you do. And you're going to want to do floors and ceilings and everything else. Uh, but the benefit also is that if we work these down to a certain amount, we can actually start to um, just do whatever we want with the level design and kind of make these little nooks and crannies and corners and stuff. And then you know, work these from one point to the other. So uh, the walls, for example, you can make a unit that's, you know, maybe like something like that you can make a whole unit like that not a big deal but that's going to be, allow you to just create destructive destructive looking environments right and then if you want things that actually destruct in real time using like chaos physics or stuff like that you might not want to use these non-manifold type walls you might want to actually use manifold mesh I'm, I'm pretty sure that system i haven't really got to play with it but i'm pretty sure it does some kind of boolean operations like fracture system right and so you're probably going to need man manifold mesh to do that so just keep that in mind, all right? Now, um, so yeah, you can lay these kinds of things out super fast. Not a big deal, but you don't have to work 
on these at such granular levels, but this is like the cornerstone of this, all right? This is like a fundamental aspect of creating 3D models in general, where you want to do the least amount of work as possible in order to create what you really want to create. So sometimes doing things real granular might not be the best option because if you can do things bigger and it's faster, then that might be a better option. However, if you're trying to have a bunch of intricate buildings and you want to have a bunch of different types of interiors, exteriors, mix and match, and all kinds of other fun stuff, you might end up doing something like this and maybe combining it later on or whatever the case may be. A lot of people get worried about draw calls. The draw calls are uh, mesh times material times lighting sources, right? Or something like that anyways. And so, but there's a trick to it. Draw calls can also get batched together. And, you know, you can't just batch everything together, obviously, but um, it'll still slow down at a certain point, but it does reduce the overhead there. So you really need to like get into the, like the GPU profiler and as you're building things out, test it, see what's working, what's not, what's causing um, maybe hiccups and stutters or whatever the case may be. Generally speaking, as long as you keep these things kind of simple for the most part um, and then start to work into the, you know, what you can and can't get away with later on, you'll have a better time. So think about level design as well. That has a huge effect on how many triangles are on screen. So when you're laying out your level, you want to make sure you're paying attention to your triangle counts if possible and things like that as well. Let's talk about light bleed for a second. A pillar like this, obviously, if it was a solid piece with no um, cut in the middle with the UV maps for the light, the light map, right? Um, this will light bleed, obviously. So you don't want to really do that necessarily. That's another benefit of splitting things up sometimes. But um, you could split the UV map up for the light map and it won't light bleed anymore. As for these, as long as these are, you know, the light sources are being blocked. So if this is all airtight, like there's no gaps in here anywhere, and it's not poking through to the other side somehow, you're not going to have light bleed issues, all right? The only time you will is if, like, say, a wall was missing, right? So if a, let's say, um, let's say we had an interior environment like this, right? And we got to go into... There's an alleyway next to this building, but it's a non-playable area, right? But it, there's a window here or something. You can see into it. You might not need the walls on this side at all. And as a result, you have like a street light or something. And it shines through here, and it casts all on the floor. That's a possibility because it's, it's not airtight, right? So... These units usually, in Unreal Engine at least, you can tag them to stop light from going through them. You don't have to tag everyone like that, but that would happen on the mesh in the, uh, the editor at the time. Right. Now, how that affects performance, I'm really not sure about that one myself. So you'll have to measure it and see what happens. All right. So roadways, cities in general, your roadway is your minimum size for your units. So if you're going to make a 10 meter roadway, you got a 10 meter building, that's the smallest you can go there. Okay. Generally speaking. Now there's kind of an exception to that, uh, but this is all 10 meter sections, right? This one's a 20 by 10. So it's 10 in this direction. 20. Right. And that's okay. That's fine. You can go up. You can't really go down though. Right. And so you lay out your roadways. You might want to create uh, corner units and then you might want to create little T sections and stuff like that. So technically I don't even need all this. Like this is um, basically, right? A little T section or something. But you can lay out your sidewalks however you see fit. Now you got your big building here. You can, you don't have to necessarily go out to the extent there uh, with the building itself. You could just, you know, create like a plane. I don't know where my plane was created. Let's do it over here. You could create like a plane and snap it. And then just make that a 10 meter section. That number. And so that could be a part of this here, right? Those two can be joined. All right. That gives you a chance to just have those little um, crevices between buildings sometimes if you want that, right? And then also trying to build like an alleyway, you probably wouldn't use that same road unit again, right? You'd probably use something different. But um, you can throw that little building in here. Right? And you can do things like 
um, set up just like concrete or maybe like an offset kind of sidewalk section and you treat it as a 10 meter unit still but then you can run uh, props out that just kind of cramp it up a little bit more so it doesn't feel like it's such a big area things like that can also uh, happen in a crew so just keep that in mind but generally speaking yeah this this is pretty much it you know you can do overhangs that's going to be on you if you want to uh, do overhangs you can make these separate so that you have different types of over overhangs and things like that um, as long as you're not running mesh through mesh that um shouldn't be it's, it's not technically wrong i mean if you plan for it you're prepared for that be used in a certain way then that's fine generally speaking it's bad advice to um, do that but on something like this it's probably just it's probably just okay fine not gonna hurt nothing really yeah. anyway so you'd go through your whole project uh, setting up just tons and tons of things basically you do it all extremely granular but that's going to be pretty performance intensive after a little while um, sometimes just doing big buildings that you can't enter and then having little sections of that building that you can enter can be quite important um, it's the way a lot of games do it obviously but you know you're going to still want to know how to work down to the 10 centimeter grid for something like this and then maybe make it work on the one meter grid and then um, Maybe you'll put that in as part of the um, 10 meter grid section, right? So you're not stuck working at any one value here. You can go up and down, up and down as needed throughout your asset. But if you don't understand working with them in this respect, you're going to have a much harder time. Well, these are actually kind of easier in a way to do, right? They're usually simpler shapes, bigger. It's usually easier, but... Um, when you have to start incorporating the interior, the exterior, and the uh, door frames together, and how to line it all up and make it all work together, if you don't understand this stuff here, this is um, going to seem easy at first, and then it's just going to hit you that you're doing something wrong. But now you'll, at least now, if you, after watching some of my videos, you can start to get the idea what's happening here. It starts small, granular, right, and then it starts to get bigger if you need it to. Or you can do bigger and then just have certain parts being granular. So there's all kinds of, it's just different ways you can go about doing things, right? This is just one example. I'm going to try something here. I haven't actually tried in Blender just to see if it works real quick. Um, but you could say, for example, uh, if I rotate this um, Z 45 degrees and then rotate it locally on X 45 degrees like this. Okay, I'm going to click the plus sign up here. This creates, um, it's using the local object orientation right now. So we're going to call this new grid. I want to see if when I try to grid snap this, right, we're going to use that transformation here. Oop, this one. I want to grid snap it. Okay. Curious if it's actually on a grid or if it's just kind of um, freely moving. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, no, it seems, see, that's what I think it's doing. It's doing a. Okay. So it's not doing an absolute grid snap, it's doing a relative grid snap. So. You would have to do everything relatively like perfect with each other, which is going to be a little bit weird, I think. And this unit may not have been absolutely correct either. So we'll try doing relative. Yeah, relative seems to have worked better here. So turn off absolute grid snap in this case. This is another way you can work with um, modular systems. So not very common like you don't see a lot of people talk about this one but this could be useful in certain situations um, let's say you're trying to make um i don't know it could be different things like a cave entrance right um, so you might want to have some units going in that direction basically but you can see as you bring things out it's just they don't line up like that so it's kind of weird way I don't know how I'd get back to that that setup though. You'd have to set it with an object 
and then never delete it. So you always have that reference because you need to line up the cursor to it with machine tools here. See what I'm saying? So if I create a new object, I do like a cube. That's how they normally come in, but you can set them to the 3D cursor as well. So now we can do like this offset grid almost, but it's a it's not an absolute grid snap. It's a relative grid snap or whatever. So uh, this is just something you could try doing. So you can also do uh, vertex snapping modular systems. Like there's no nothing wrong with that. Um, you could use like little control points. I sh when I did the video on um, KitOps, they had the little um, hard points system in it now. You can set that kind of stuff up for game engines as well. That's how the basically how the um, the um, procedural systems work, anyways. Something like that. So, anyways, hopefully you get it. All right? If you do, give the video a like, subscribe. Thumbs up, whatever. And I'll check you guys out in the next one, all right? Take care.